You guys are beautiful and, and just amazing and world changers, and we're super excited to partner and also become a part of this house. Not only do we have our own ministry, but we have submitted our lives in our ministry up under Pastor uh, Isaac and Cynthia, and God is doing great things. Amen? Yesterday, I want to tell you, yesterday, well, before that, I want to tell you, I want to give honor. We have a special guest, uh, Evangelist Erica. Would you lift your hand up real quick? She's uh, visiting us. Amen. Thank you for coming, sister, and Evangelist Josh. Amen. Um, I, and I want to thank all of you for coming, because you could be anywhere else, but you chose to become, to come into the house of God. Amen. And David said, let us, he said, man, he rejoiced when they said, let us go into the house of God. Amen. Because I truly believe something historic is going to happen today in your life. Amen. I don't believe that we're just doing another Sunday. I believe something magnificent, something powerful is going to happen today. Amen. I want to tell you, Thursday, uh, our sister over at the, the ministry down the street that sits right here, normally up front, that has, I'm um, forgetting her name, but she fed all these people this week, amen? They're actually gone today. I forget her name, but I want to tell you, God is doing some amazing stuff through this church, amen? Uh, Bennett and his wife is who I'm talking about in their ministry. They're not here today, but man, they fed so many people uh, Thursday. God did so much through their ministry, and I just want to give honor to what God is doing to them, through them, and through their ministry. But yesterday, Evangelist Diego, who runs our outreach ministry, along with the feeding ministry, uh, what's the name of it? The Cheerful Giver. Amen. They fed over 700 families yesterday right here in our parking lot across the street. Amen. God is doing some amazing things. This is Maranatha's outreach team. 700 families were given bags of food, and they said the food multiplied. They ran out of food, but yet it kept coming. It was miraculous. I was like, wow. And then, not only that, there was 1,034 salvations. Come on. 1,034 people received Jesus yesterday that came through the lines. Amen. And 50 uh, confirmed miracles took place yesterday. People were prayed for, and uh, they, were, they were healed. Amen. Amen. But this morning, I want to talk, I want, I want to give honor and, and praise for that because that is amazing. God is moving so much we hear negative about Chicago. But the reality is God's agenda is greater than the enemy's agenda. Amen. And so we want to declare the good news from the mountaintops, amen, that God is moving in power right here in our church, but also throughout the greater Chicagoland area, amen. Amen. And also, if you have your Bibles today, I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 7. And the title of the message today is Faith Changes the World. Amen. I just want to encourage you today that, man, your faith changes the world, man, because, man, we see people in the Bible like David, Esther, many people in the Bible, their faith, when they exercise their faith, they change the planet. I truly believe if you will exercise your faith, God will use you to change the world. Amen? Do you believe that today? You know, when we don't exercise like I've been in the last years or so, I, I, begin, I get weak. But here in the last couple of months, Josh has been taking me, making me go work out, lift weights. And I think I lifted almost 400 pounds the other day by bench press, right? But it's because I began to exercise my faith. I want to encourage you today, man or woman of God, no matter where you're at in life, to begin to exercise your faith. Amen? Are you with me this morning? 
because you're not created to be a spectator. You're not created to stay in the bleachers and watch the soccer game or the football game or the basketball game. No, no, it's, we can no longer be on the sidelines. Those days are over. Listen, many men and women of God came before us. Great revivalists came before us. But guess what? Now it is our time. Now it is our moment, but we must seize the moment. So you must rise up in this hour with faith, amen, to change the planet, amen? Amen. So if you have your Bibles, I want to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and it says, hey, that we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. So we walk by the word of God and not by what we see. Amen. We don't, we're not moved by our situation. We're not moved by worries, but we're moved by the word of God. Come on. Amen. Are you with me today? <laughs> Come on. So, so even the Bible says that we're made innocent, justified by faith this morning. Amen. Did you know that? Did you know that you are completely made innocent? The Bible says in Romans 3, 23, that you're justified by faith. That means that you're made spotless, innocent, not by your works, but by your faith that Jesus Christ died on the cross, was buried in the tomb, and was raised on the third day. Amen? So your faith is Powerful. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, your faith is powerful. Listen, if you go to uh, Hebrews chapter 11, that's the people that changed the world were people who had faith. Amen. And I want to encourage you this morning. Faith comes by what? It comes by hearing and by hearing what? The word of God. So this morning, as faith is released, I want to encourage you to exercise your faith. Amen? And, and it says in verse 2, it says, The elders gained a good report by their faith. They became good witness. They, they, they gained a good witness because of their faith. And I'm just stirred in this hour because we're in an hour where there's such opposition. There's an out, we're living in an hour where the political climate is crazy. We're living in an hour where everything seems to be shaken. But I want to tell you one thing that is not being shaken. That is the kingdom of God. Amen. Wars come and go. Kingdoms come and go. Presidents, political parties, they all come and go but there's one thing that remains forever that is the kingdom of God amen amen praise God this morning I'm super excited because man all week we've been seeing people saved we were out this week even uh, in downtown Chicago singing and preaching the gospel and people were being saved amen faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. I want to encourage you. You were created to shine. You were created to be the light of the world. Amen? Amen. And guys, I want to encourage you to James 2, it says, 226, it says, faith without works is dead. It says, so the, as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead i remember not too long ago i went out of town to another nation and i came home and our little beautiful cat would i came back and it was stiff and it had died <laughs> and uh poor it was a good cat though and uh but it was stiff and stinky and i want to tell you that many of us in the church because we have not 
been exercising our faith. You go into some churches and you can just smell it. You can smell the dead faith. You can smell the stinkiness. And, and you go in there and you're like, oh man, I want to encourage you. Some of us, we need to like come alive. Amen. Some of us need to fall back in love with Jesus. Amen. Some of us need to, to get a jolt, like a to, to get ignited by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because we're, we've been stinky and we've been smelling because we began to, to decay or, or to die. But the reality is this. Listen, Jesus can raise us up. Amen. And I really believe that this is an hour for many of us to come alive. Many of us are coming alive and stepping into our destiny in this season. Amen. No matter how young you are or old you are. Listen, God has a plan for your life. Amen. Do you know that some of the people God used the most were older people? I hear many old people saying, I'm too old, blah, 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 blah. I'm a senior citizen, blah, blah, blah. I want to tell you, brother or sister, that God used Moses, that God used so many people throughout the Bible that were elderly. It does not matter your, your, how many years you've been on the earth or how young you are even. God uses anybody that is willing. The Bible even says that the eyes of the Lord are running through the whole earth looking for the one whose heart is completely God's. And it says that God will show himself strong through that person. Amen. So listen, many of us think, oh, oh uh, I got to look for God. No, I'm telling you, God is looking right now in your heart and in hearts all over the world for the one that will say like a Billy Graham or like a Gigi Aguilar or like these men and women of God like Esther who will say I'll lay my life down I see that I've been created for such a time as this and I will lay my life down so that God can use me will that be you today is that you in this hour? Will you be like a Rahab and recognize it's time to, to get out of, off of this team and get on the God team? Amen? Will you recognize, like Esther did, that it was her time to lay down her life, even if it meant her life, because she loved God and loved her people so much? I'm telling you, that's the hour that we're in. God is looking for men and women of God to to rise up and to shine their light, to sound the alarm. You know that there are 10 virgins. There's a story of 10 virgins, right? And, and, and there's, there are five of them are wise and five are unwise. And one has oil, one, five of them have oil and the other five don't. And guess what? At one point, they all go to sleep. They all fall asleep. And then there's an alarm heard, a cry is heard, an alarm is sounded. I believe we're in that moment. I believe that we are in the moment, especially for America, where the alarm is sounding, wake up. Wake up, wake up my bride, wake up my bride. And five of them had oil. And five didn't. The Bible says that we should be a lamp burning, filled with oil. Are you burning in this hour? Or has your fire gone out? Because I'm constantly checking myself. I want to encourage you to constantly examine your life. To see that, if you, that you be in the faith or not. Amen. And some of you may be asleep today. Well, I want to say get up. Amen. And if you're not, let's run together. Let's run this race together. Amen. Let's lock our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our what? Faith. Amen. Come on. Do you know what faith means? Faith is a Greek word. It's called pistis. And it means to be persuaded. It means to be convinced, Josh. It means to be fully persuaded. Paul said, I am persuaded of this thing. 
I'm telling you, if there was any time for you to become a fool for Jesus, it's right now. I'm telling you, Paul said, I've become a fool for Christ. I forget everything in my past, and I look towards Jesus. I want to encourage you this hour, become, fall in love with Jesus. Do you remember when you fell in love for the first time? I'm watching Josh. He, he's in love in this hour. Amen? But I remember when I fell in love with my bride, my wife. Man, all I wanted was her. All I wanted to do was marry her. I thought about her day and night. And I want to ask you in this hour, are you in love with Jesus? Man, are you burning for Jesus? Do you still get excited about the word of God? Do you still get excited about prayer time, your prayer life with Jesus? Amen? Because I'm telling you, love life, the, the love, the passionate love of Jesus, it's an amazing thing to be in love with Jesus. See, you can either be in love where there's life, or you can be dead where it stinks, it's stiff, it's super religious. Or you can have life full of love, full of passion, full of the miraculous of God. I'm telling you, there's, I don't live a, a boring day in my life. Following Jesus is far from boring. You get to see miracles every day. Every, every day you get to see Jesus. You get to experience Christ. There's nothing boring about the anointed one. That's what the word Christ means, the anointed one. He is the Messiah. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the bright and morning star. He is the lily in the valley. He is the rose of Sharon. He is the counselor, the great king, the great I am. I want to tell you he is, he was, and he will be. He is the one who reigns for eternity. And I want to tell you right now, in heaven right now, multitudes, multitudes are worshiping him and they're saying worthy 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 and the elders the highest of all of them are falling on their face as they gaze at him he is so shiny so holy so righteous they fall down on their knees and they cast their crowns in a pile before the throne of God and they say worthy worthy is the lamb Seraphim and angels are flying around wildly. And there's this echo in worship in all of heaven saying, worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. I want to tell you today, brothers and sisters, he is worthy. Amen. He is worthy to lock your gaze on. He's greater than Instagram. He's greater than TikTok. He's greater than Facebook. He's greater than Fox News. He's greater than CNN. I want to tell you, he is worthy. He is worthy. Come on. Woo, come on. He's so good. He is so good. God is good. My God, I'm telling you. You know, in Hebrews 11, verse 6, if we could pull that up for you this morning. Man, I'm telling you, I, I, I am excited about what God is doing in Chicago. Amen? Because I'm seeing opposite of what I've always heard. I'm seeing opposite of what I hear, because what I'm hearing is God, right? I'm seeing God manifest. Okay, Hebrews 11:6, it says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Here it is. When you come to God, you must believe that he is. 
When you go to prayer, when you go into your prayer room, I go in there a lot of times and I say, God, I believe that you are, that you is, like the Bible says. I believe you is, that you are, and I come before you. And so God, man, he rewards you. And that word in the Greek, it means to pay you. He pays you. He blesses you because you diligently seek him. Come on. But without faith, it is impossible. You cannot gratify God because that word in the Greek for please, it means to, for pleasure, to gratify. You cannot please God with out faith. We see that throughout the Bible. If you can think of many, many times throughout the Bible, I'll give you an example. King, King David pleased God. He runs out there on a battlefield. He didn't use the armor or the shield of Saul, King Saul, but he used the shield of faith, amen? He went out by faith on that battlefield, and he believed that God was going to show up, amen? But then you have Saul who doubted God, who really didn't believe. And you see how David pleased God and how Saul didn't please God. You see it in the life of Rahab, the prostitute. She began to believe that God was God and that she needed to get on his side. So she received uh, the spies into her house. Even though it could have cost her her life, she began to believe. But the people heard her people did not believe, and so they all died. Faith gives you life. The Bible says the just shall live by faith this morning. Amen? Amen. So I want to tell you that the things that we're facing in the future, we can overcome by faith. The Bible says if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, and maybe some of you this morning are facing mountains. I want to tell you those mountains can be moved by your faith this morning. Amen. Do you know if the Bible says, Jesus says, if you pray and believe, if you have faith that you received what you prayed for, it shall be yours. Amen? But you got to believe it. All things are possible to those who believe. Come on, amen? He will do abundantly he, he will do abundantly far beyond whatever we can ask or think according to his riches and glory. Amen. He will meet our needs according to his riches and glory. But the Bible says he will do far beyond whatever we can ask or think. Amen. That's Ephesians 3.20. Exceedingly and abundantly far beyond whatever we could ask or think. Do you believe that this morning? I want to encourage you in this hour to sow more in your life, to sow more seed than you ever have in your life. I really do. Not only financial seed, but your time seed, your life seed, your family seed, every, every bit of seed you have, prayer seed. I want to encourage you to sling that seed out into the kingdom of God like never before. You only have one life. You have one life here on the earth, and it's very short. Although you live eternal when you die, but you have one short life here on the earth. And the Bible says it's like vapor. Many people will cook out, to, cook out on the grill tomorrow or today. I want to say thank you for you veterans. Happy Memorial Day to you guys that have served. Thank you. Amen. I forgot to say that in the beginning, forgive me. Um, but many of us will cook out steaks or grills or hamburgers and we'll see the smoke going up, right? And it's quickly, it quickly goes away. We see it in the beginning. Or just like in this season we're in, we see all the flowers. Because the Bible says we're like grass of the field. We're here one day and gone tomorrow. You know, uh, we see the grass in our yards or on somebody else's yard. I don't have much of a yard, but 
Oh, here in Chicago. <laughs> but uh, we see the flowers coming up everywhere. And they're so beautiful. Man, you, you, it'll stop you. They're so, some of them downtown in downtown Chicago and some of the, the small things they have the flowers in, they're so gorgeous, they literally stop you. And you're like, wow, God's creation is so beautiful, right? But the reality is those flowers... They won't be here in a month or two. They're going to be gone. Their moment was so short. Many of us know people right now, our grandfathers or mothers or fathers or sisters or brothers or wives or husbands were here. And there was a moment that they affected the world so much, but they're gone. And I want to tell you this, if any one of them could come back and talk to us right now, they would tell us, wake up, give your life to Jesus. Not only say a prayer, but live fully for Jesus every day. Amen? Like sow your life into the kingdom of heaven. Sow everything you got into heaven street, not wall street. Come on, because that's a a return that just continues to increase. It doesn't decrease daily. It increases in the heavens. Amen? So I want to encourage you to sow your life in this hour. Amen? Like never before, the alarm is sounding. Wake up, church. Wake up, church. We have entered a new time, a new era. Have you not noticed in the last several years, things have began to speed up like never before? It's not lasting all day. Do you remember when days where you were just like, man, I wish this day would hurry up. But now it's like I can't even hardly do anything in a day. Because the Bible says that that time, it even says the days will shorten for the elect's sake. That's what the Bible says. And they've even said scientifically that the earth's spinach, the spinning of the earth has increased quicker than it used to be. That's wild. I'm telling you. It's it, like we're here, guys. Like it's time to, to fully just let go of fear, let go of doubt, let go of any sin that has held you back and step into your God-like nature. Amen? I know that I'm talking to a bunch of kings and queens. Amen? I know that I'm talking to a bunch of world changers, but I want to encourage you. We're no longer slaves to sin, but we're slaves to righteousness. Amen? Like we are kings and priests, a royal priesthood. Amen? When you pray, things change. Amen? Like Elijah, he prayed. His prayers changed the nation. I want to encourage you. You don't need many people. Listen, Gideon changed the world. Amen? God is looking for the one right now that will say, man, I will take my prayers and I will move principalities. I will shake this city. I will not stay Stop praying till I see Chicago changed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I want to ask you to stand to your feet today. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We see in the life of Daniel, his prayers began to shake the heavens. Amen. And when he prayed, principalities would try to fight his prayers, would try to intervene and stop his destiny. But his prayers moved principalities. And 21 days later, an angel appeared to him and said, The Lord heard you the first time, but the prince of Persia was fighting me. Who will stand up in this hour against the princes of Chicago and move principalities over this city? I'm telling you, you can do all things in Christ if you believe. If you need a miracle today, If you need breakthrough today, if you need financial breakthrough, if you need a physical healing today, I want to encourage you 
to come by faith today. As you come, come in faith today. Come forward and believe for a breakthrough. We want to pray for you today. Amen. If you need a shift, a change, a breakthrough in your life, and man, it's, there's a lot been going on in your life, and you said, man, I need breakthrough. I, I need fresh love. I need to fall back in love with Jesus. I need to really give my life to Jesus. Then come, just come by faith today. I want to tell you, God is pleased by faith. He's pleased by faith. Anything you do in faith will always be rewarded. Hey, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yeah, we're just going to, I want to ask the sisters, are you still here? Could you come up and sing a song, sister? Yeah. Hey, I, d I really want to believe for victory over your life. That song that was sung earlier about victory in every area, whatever area that is, I want to encourage you just to believe, just to be persuaded in this moment to walk by faith and not by sight. See, that was time not too long go. I want to ask the prayer people to come up forward. I want you to start praying for people, please. There was a time not long ago where it seemed like every enemy in the area came after me. People were trying to take everything I had. But the reality is I walked into my kitchen and I saw this plaque up there and it said walk by faith and not by sight. Maybe this morning you've had a you've had a disease or you've had a pain for 20 years. You've been prayed for. Maybe you've had uh, uh, your finances haven't been good for for all your life. But I want to encourage you in this moment to step into faith. Step into faith. Step into your destiny. Leave all the doubt, leave all the discouragement behind and say, I'm going to have this thing. I'm going after it today. God has called me to be an evangelist. God has called me to be a prophet or whatever God is calling you to do. I want to ask you, by faith, by faith, step into this thing. Because you have victory. You have victory. Come on. Yes. Come on. Breakthrough. We call upon the God of breakthrough today. Yes. Jesus. Jesus. Erica, come help us pray. Jesus. I speak victory. I speak victory. We're bringing home every son and daughter. Rulers of darkness have to bow. I speak victory. I speak victory, victory in the name of Jesus. I speak victory over every life, over every family. I speak victory. Over every situation, over every nation, every enemy is conquered, every stronghold must count down. I speak victory, I speak victory, you're bringing home every son and daughter, rulers of darkness have to bow, I speak Bringing 
every heart in this place, over every mind, over every body, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name.
God is moving. Amen. Sister in the back there, will you lift your hands? Yeah, you. I just felt something over you the whole time during the service. Yeah, would you and the brother come forward? Yeah, come. Amen. Yeah. Wow. Just lift your hands, guys. I just feel this sense of God all over you guys. I just feel like God is with you. Yeah, sister, I sense a new season coming into your life. So, Lord, I prophesy a new season for the old to go away and for the new to come in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, God, for divine favor over them, God, and over their future. Lord, I just thank you in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for resources in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Sister, I feel breakthrough just over you. Breakthrough. I feel God is wanting to restore your heart even in Jesus' name. Can you understand me? Yeah, I just feel restoration, restoration over you. And I feel there's a season of joy coming. There's a season of joy coming and celebration. I just declare that and I decree that over your life. Like God is going to raise you up where you've been discouraged, you've been depressed, you've been through some stuff, but I feel that God is raising you up in this season. The chains are falling. The chains are falling in the name of Jesus. So I bless you, brother. I bless you as well. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Guys, I just wanted to do one more thing, amen? Where's Maria at? Maria, are you gone already? Will you lift your hands towards Maria? Wow, and I feel Erica too. Will you come, Erica, Sister Erica? Yeah. I just feel over both of you, I truly feel a fresh wind of acceleration over both of you. In Jesus' name, a wind that you can't even blow yourself. It's nothing that you're gonna do. It's something that's supernatural, that's coming behind you. And I feel like that God is saying, open your cells, open your heart, because God, he's blowing something and it's gonna affect your life in a, in a powerful way. And so Lord, I just prophesy that over Maria and Erica right now. God, a, a season of acceptance acceleration even where that you I feel like you're gonna like overtake the sowers with the reapers and in that book of the Bible where it says that you will overtake the sowers the reapers will overtake the sowers so there's a supernatural effect over your life in this season that, that is exploding your growth your resources I just declare it I decree new doors new relationships new uh, even new continents new new people and new places you're going to go to in the name of Jesus. You may say, well, I don't even have a passport. I don't, I don't even get along with these certain people. But the Lord says, my favor is upon you. My grace is upon you. And you shall go and you shall fulfill the will of the Lord for, for your life. And so, Father, we lift our hands and we say, God, send them out to where you're sending them, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, let them explode with your glory. Let them raise the dead, heal the sick, cast out devils. God, freely they've been given, freely they shall give. Father, I thank you for women of faith in this hour that are going to change the nations. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, God is moving. God is moving so powerfully. And I want to ask you today, 
like I said, to sow. And this is an amazing house of God. And I truly believe that as you sow, you sh at what we give, we shall reap. And if you have an offering today, uh, we're going to come up. The, the letters are there. And if you need an envelope to put your offering in today, uh, just ask for an envelope. In Jesus' name. And we want to pray for you that, that give. We want to believe what you give, you shall receive. What you sow, you shall reap. Amen. And we truly believe that what you give, God blesses. Amen. Supernaturally, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're in a great season of faith. The ground is good here, guys. I want to encourage you to sow, to sow into this ground. Amen. I want to thank God for the worship team as well. You guys are amazing. Thank you for the worshipers, the guitar, drummer. Thank you, guys. The sound people, you guys have been all amazing. Thank you, the ushers, the, the, the team, the, and the, in the, the hallway there, thank you guys for always having a smile on your face. Amen. Or greeting people. Thank you guys so much. It means a lot when you can come to a place and they're smiling. Because so many times we go around the city and people ain't smiling. So it really, it, I mean, really your smile can change the planet. Just telling somebody they look good changes the planet. Yeah. So I want to pray over the offering. As you give, if you give freely, you shall receive freely. If you give in abundance, you shall receive in abundance. Father, I thank you for supernatural breakthrough that it was released today. I thank you for your word that is alive. I thank you for this church that is a blessing to so many of us, God. And I pray over those that give sacrificially every week and every month. Lord, I pray this season they would receive more than they ever have in their life. I pray inheritances that were unknown would come. Lord, uh, Lord, money from unknown places would show up in this season in their mailbox, in their bank accounts. Father, I pray for creative ways.